Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hi. Good to see everybody once again. Let's begin. Just let me um, get the file ready. Over here. Okay, I'm sharing the screen with you now. There it is. Let me get a bit more comfortable here. Okay. Um, everybody take a look. Uh, as usual, well, there are only nine participants connected right now to this meeting. So um, I don't know if I should call attendance right now. Maybe a bit later. Now, you know what? I'm going to do it now because I don't want to start uh, the content. There is like some important information that I need to mention. And uh, I believe it's best if I just uh, leave some time for people to, you know, join the meeting. In the meantime, I'm going to um, call the attendance. So when you hear your name, please let me know. Let's begin. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Daisy, no, sorry. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Elisa Arely López Campos. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present, teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Present, teacher. Welcome. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Present. Okay, welcome. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Present, sir. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Present. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present, teacher. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. All right, let's begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English One, and that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. This is session 16, the last one, and today, September 21st of 2023. Let's do this. We have a lot of things to do today, and uh, we're going to continue the topic we started yesterday. You have clauses, stating reasons, and conditions. Okay, we um, started this last time. We should probably have a very quick review of this before we go 
over the second part. Okay, so you have this, clauses stating reasons and conditions. There's a review, right? Even if introduces a condition that does not influence the main cause. Clause, I'm sorry. I sometimes lie awake at night, even if I'm really tired. This is like incluso C, right? Even if I'm really tired. Considering that, introduces causes and reasons that explain the main clause. I am lucky I can get by on six hours of sleep. Considering that, most people need eight. Considering that in Spanish, it's more like considerando que o tomando en cuenta que, right? As long as introduces a condition on which the main clause depends. Example, I can manage in five hours of sleep as long as I take a nap during the day. This is like when you say siempre y cuando, okay? Unless introduces something that must happen in order to avoid a consequence. Unless I get a good night's sleep, I can easily fall asleep at work, at school, sorry, at work, or even while driving. Unless, in Spanish, this is a menos que. In case, or just in case, introduces an undesirable circumstance that needs to be taken into account. Example, I always set two alarm clocks in case or just in case one of them doesn't go off. Okay, just in case, en caso que, right? And only if introduces a condition that must be met for the main clause to be true. Example, I only wake up early if I have somewhere to be in the morning. Only if it's like unicamente si, solo si. This is what we studied yesterday, but there's some new information that I want you to take a look at. So uh, the following are all additional commonly used clauses that state reasons and conditions. Now, that's the first one. Now that introduces a change in general circumstances that explains the main clause. Now that means because now, it's the same. Now that I have a, a job that starts early, I have to leave the house by 6.30. Similar to Spanish when you say, ahora que, right? Ahora que ya tengo trabajo que empieza temprano, tengo que salir más temprano. So now that I have a job that starts early, I have to leave the house by 6.30. So again, now that means because now. Whether or not, that's the next one, whether or not introduces a condition that might or might not occur and which will not influence the main clause. Note it's two possible positions. You can say, she goes jogging every morning whether or not it's bad weather, okay? or she goes jogging every morning, whether it's bad weather or not. So whether or not basically is like, ya sea que suceda o no suceda. Okay, in other words, it doesn't affect the outcome. It doesn't affect the result. If it happens, no problem. If it doesn't happen, no problem. Okay, just like that. Provided or providing that introduces a condition that must be met for the main clause to be true. Provided or providing that, sorry, it's provided that and providing that um, means if. It's just the same as if, okay? Provided that I get all my schoolwork done, my weekend will be free. It's the same as saying, if I get all my schoolwork done, my weekend will be free, okay? Providing that I get a promotion, I'll stay with my company a few more years. It's the same as saying, if I get a promotion, I'll stay with my company a few more years. So that's the explanation. These are the new ones, okay? Remember, now that, whether or not, provided that and providing that. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or uh, the grammar in general? No questions? Moving on. Exercise time. Exercise number one. Match the sentence on the left with the correct meaning on the right. So there's number one. Well, I'm going to read them. I always have breakfast whether I'm hungry or not. Number two. Now that she works the afternoon shift, 
she always has time for breakfast. Number three, unless her mother makes it, she doesn't bother with breakfast. Number four, she only eats breakfast if she's hungry. Number five, provided that she has enough time, she has breakfast. Number six, as long as she has breakfast, she can concentrate in class. So uh, those are the statements. On the right, you have the explanation or the meaning of each of the statements. Um, I want you to take a good look at each of them, right? Number one is, I always have breakfast whether I'm hungry or not. Six possible meanings. A, she has plenty of time to eat something in the morning. B, sometimes she skips her morning meal. C, I eat something every morning. D, when she's in a hurry, she doesn't eat breakfast. E, she never makes her own morning meal. F, if she doesn't eat, she can't think clearly. So the first one, I always have breakfast whether I'm hungry or not. What is the meaning of that? A, B, C, D, E, or F? If you have the answer, please raise your hand. Elizabeth del Carmen. Letter C. I Letter C. Something. Yeah, yeah. Can you read it, please? I'm sorry. I eat something every morning. That is correct. Okay. Number one is I always have breakfast whether I'm hungry or not. So if I'm hungry, I have breakfast. If I'm not hungry, I have breakfast. Okay. So that means I eat something every morning. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, number two, now that she works the afternoon shift, she always has time for breakfast. How about this one? What's the explanation? You can choose among A, B, D, E, and F. Gabriel Antonio. It's letter A. She has plenty of time to eat something in the morning. That is correct. Yeah, now that she works the afternoon shift, I mean, she doesn't work in the morning. She has, she always has time for breakfast. So that means she has plenty of time to eat something in the morning. Okay, that is correct. Thank you. Number three, unless her mother makes it, she doesn't bother with breakfast. She doesn't bother. No se molesta, right? She doesn't bother. No se molesta en hacerlo, right? O en consumirlo. She doesn't bother with breakfast. So unless her mother makes it, she doesn't bother with breakfast. I need a volunteer for this one. This one is probably a bit more difficult, but let's give it a try. Madeline. I will try. So uh, just a question, a question. What does mean unless? The meaning of unless is a menos que. Um, I guess the answer is little e. That is correct. Can you read it? She never makes her own morning meal. That's correct. Unless, a menos que, right? Unless her mother makes it, she doesn't bother with breakfast. That means if the mom makes breakfast, okay, she will eat it. If she doesn't make breakfast, she's like, okay, she will not eat it. So that means she never makes her own morning meal. That's right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Vanily. All right. Um, number four, she only eats breakfast if she is hungry. How about this one? I need a volunteer. Some have participated. That's really good, but I want to hear the rest. Okay, so. Volunteer, she only eats breakfast if she is hungry. Ana Cecilia. Uh, teacher, yes, I think is little b. That's right. Okay, can you read it? Sometimes she keeps her morning meal. Sometimes she skips her morning meal, okay? So she only eats breakfast if she's hungry. If she's hungry, she eats breakfast. But if she's not hungry, she doesn't eat breakfast. Okay, so that means that sometimes she skips her morning meal. That is correct. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Number five, provided that she has enough time, she has breakfast. Byron. 
It's letter D. Can you read it? When she is a hurry, she doesn't eat breakfast. That is correct. Very good. Provided that she has enough time, she has breakfast. In other words, if she has enough time, she has breakfast. Letter D. When she's in a hurry, when she doesn't have enough time, okay, she doesn't have breakfast. That's correct. Very good. We have a chat entry here. Gabriela Seituno, presente. Okay. Thank you, Gabriela. I'm going to take your... I'm going to take attendance for you now. Gabriela Alejandra Seituno. Welcome. Um, I'll use the opportunity. Is Ana Cecilia? Yeah, Ana Cecilia is here. She just participated. <laughs> okay, yes, Ana yes. Cecilia. Welcome. Um, is Elmer online tonight? Elmer Mauricio Salas. Juan Antonio Moran Rodriguez. Is Juan Antonio Moran Rodriguez? Juan Eduardo. Juan, I'm sorry. Okay, Juan Eduardo. I made a mistake. My bad. I need glasses. <laughs> no, I don't need glasses. I just misread it. So I apologize. Uh, Juan Eduardo, welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. All right, let's continue. And number six, there's only one left, but who wants to take it? <laughs> number six, as long as she has breakfast, she can concentrate in class. Okay. How about this one? No one wants to take it. Too easy. All right, then. So it's letter F. If she doesn't eat, she can't think clearly. That's the meaning of that. Okay, I'm, I'm really happy to see that uh, there's a fine understanding on how, you know, these expressions work. Okay, we just need a little bit more practice to master them. Okay, and to become really, really good at those. So um, let's continue. There's a little bit more practice that I want you to do. Exercise number two, circle the correct answer to complete the sentence. I'm going to give you two minutes, okay, for you to think about the answer, okay, choose the right expression, and then uh, we're going to check answers together. Let's do the first one as an example. He won't be late for work as long as the bus is on time or unless the bus is on time, okay? Which one would you choose, as long as or unless? The first one will be an example, but I want somebody to tell me. Biden. It's unless. Unless. Okay. Well, let's take a look at that. He won't be late for work. That means he will be early. Okay. He will be early. So is it as long as or unless? Is a long, as long as? It's as long as, okay? So he won't be late for work as long as the bus is on time, okay? No llegará tarde al trabajo siempre y cuando, ¿verdad? El bus llega a tiempo. So that's right. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, I'll give you two minutes, okay, for you to read them and choose the right word or words to complete the sentences. Two minutes. Let's begin.
one minute. Okay, time to check. Number two, who wants to try? Volunteers, please raise your hand. I'll be waiting. Gabriel, thank you. I guess it's considering considering that I took a nap, I shouldn't feel this drowsy. That's right. Considering that I took a nap, I shouldn't feel this drowsy. That's correct. Thank you. Number three, volunteer, please. Want to try number three? Don't be shy. Come on. Rufino. Are you going to try it? Sure. Um, I I wake up on time tomorrow. Probably that I set my alarm, my alarm clock. That is right. I wake up on time tomorrow, provided that I set my alarm clock. Meaning, if I set my alarm clock. That's right. Thank you, Rufino. Number four. Volunteer. Number four. Give it a try. Carlos Dominguez. Okay, teacher. I think so. Uh, number four. He job after work unless to tire. Um at the end of the day. Yeah, that's correct. He jogs after work. Unless he is too tired at the end of the day. Unless, a menos que, right? Unless he's too tired at the end of the day. Very good. Thank you very okay, much. Teacher. Number five. Who wants to try number five? Five, come on. You've done the exercise, right? Show me your answers. Show me what you have learned. Elisa Arely, thank you. I tried, sure. Let's give it a My try. My brother goes to bed early whether or not he's sleeping. That is correct. You see? Yeah. My brother usually goes to bed early whether or not he's sleepy. If he's sleepy, he goes to bed early. If he's not sleepy, he goes to bed early. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Lisa. Number six. Volunteer, please. Mm -hmm. 
Ana Cecilia. Number six. Even if I am going to be to be to be later, I am getting up later. Even if means incluso si. Uh -huh. Even if I'm going to bed later, I'm getting up later. So this is probably not the best choice. If it is not even if, then what do we have? Know that. It would be now that. Hey. That's right. You say, now that I'm going to bed later, I'm getting up later. Ahora que me estoy acostando más tarde, me levanto más tarde. Right? That's it. Now that. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Number seven. Who wants to try? Raise your hand, please. Number seven. No, no one. I know you can do this. Gabriel. I guess it's I'm afraid to nap at lunch even if I start snoring on my desk. Even if it's more like incluso C, right? So um, it's probably not the best option in this case. It's more like just okay. in case. Uh huh. We go with just in case. Just in right? case, okay. Mm -hmm. Just in case I start snoring at my desk. Because the person may say, for example, okay, I want to take a nap, but uh, but if what if I snore? Everybody will know that I'm sleeping here. So uh, that's the case. Just in case, right, I start snoring at my desk. You know the meaning of snore, right? Right, when you're sleeping, you make noise, okay, while well, you're trying to breathe. So thank you, Gabriel. Number eight, the last one. Who wants to try? Please raise your hand. Gabriela Sequeira. Even if I'm totally exhausted, I can sleep on airplanes. That's right. Even if I'm totally exhausted, I can sleep on airplanes. Okay. I could be completely exhausted, but even in even in, in that case, I can sleep. Okay, on airplanes. Okay, that's right. Everybody, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we need to move on to the next section because we're running out of time and also we have to go through the whole final test. It's kind of long. So moving on, uh, there's uh, section 4.8, a listening activity, okay? I had the wildest dream. Listen to Kate and Sergio talk about their dream, okay? By the way, this is not supposed to be here. <laughs> okay, listen to Kate and Sergio talk about their recurring dreams. Whose dream do you think is scarier? Okay, now this is uh, uh, an exercise in the platform, but this is about opinion. So in this case, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, you will get it correct. If you say Kate, okay, um, all right, you will get it right. If you say Sergio, you will also get it right. Okay, so it's about opinion. But uh, what I want you to do is this. Listen again, okay? What is each person's dream? What do they think the dreams mean? Complete the chart. So uh, you have the two people, Kate and Sergio, and I want you to take notes, or maybe you have done the exercise and then you can just tell me, but I want you to take notes, tell me what they dream about, and also what the meaning of the dream is, their, their interpretation of the dream, okay? So Kate has a dream, Write down what the dream is about and then what she thinks the, the dream the, the dream means. The same thing with Sergio. I'm going to play the track uh, once. If if you tell me you need to listen to it again, I'm going to play it again. For the moment, I'm going to play it once. I I guess you have listened to this before. It's in the platform. So um, I'll play the track now. Please uh, take notes and then you'll tell me the answers. Okay. Listen to Kate and Sergio talk about their recurring dreams. Whose dream do you think is scarier? Uh, can you hear that? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Sergio, 
Do you ever have recurring dreams? Yeah, sure. Why, Kate? Well, I had one last night. I'm back in high school, and in my dream, the school looks mostly the same as it did, but much bigger. The weird thing is, although I'm 23 years old, I'm back in high school with all these 15-year-olds. It's very embarrassing. No one seems to notice that I'm much older and shouldn't be there in the first place. But still, it's very uncomfortable. I keep thinking, what am I doing here? Well, I know it must be the end of the school year because everyone is talking about final exams. And that's when it hits me that I've forgotten to go to math class all year. And there's a big math test today. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I'm totally unprepared. So I start to go to class, but then I realize I can't find it. No matter how far, how many hallways, I just can't find it. I know I'm late for class, and this really worries me. Finally, I wind up in my math class, but it's almost over. So I've missed most of the test, and I think I'm going to fail or something. Basically, that's the dream. That's a bad one. Do you have that dream a lot? Sometimes. I guess it means that I'm worried or overwhelmed about something that is happening in my life. Yeah, I sometimes have this bad dream. I guess it's really a nightmare. I'm in danger, but I'm not sure from what, and I can't move or scream or anything. I can feel something coming closer and closer to me. You know, it's really strange, because usually in the dream, I'm exactly where I am in real life, like in my own bed, in my bedroom, and everything is very realistic. The only part that is dreamlike is that I can't move. Sometimes I can't even open my eyes, or I can only open one eye. Usually I have to alert someone or possibly save someone, although the person often changes. Anyway, I can't do anything because I can't move. It's really terrifying. Yeah, it sounds terrifying. So what do you think it means? I'm not sure, but you know, I think the dream means that I'm feeling there's something in my life that I can't control, although I feel like I should be able to. Once I had the dream when one of my friends was very sick, and I just felt completely helpless. I hate feeling that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. All right. Um, do you want me to play the track a second time, or do you have the answers now? Should I play the track again? Yes, yeah, teacher. Okay, I'm playing the yeah, track teacher. a second. All right. All right. Yes, teacher. All right, all right. I'm playing the track a second time. Please uh, complete or take notes on the information. Here we go. Listen to prayer. Hey, Sergio, do you ever have recurring dreams? Yeah, sure. Why, Kate? Well, I had one last night. I'm back in high school, and in my dream, the school looks mostly the same as it did, but much bigger. The weird thing is, although I'm 23 years old, I'm back in high school with all these 15-year-olds. It's very embarrassing. No one seems to notice that I'm much older and shouldn't be there in the first place. But still, it's very uncomfortable. I keep thinking, what am I doing here? Well, I know it must be the end of the school year because everyone is talking about final exams. And that's when it hits me that I've forgotten to go to math class all year. And there's a big math test today. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I'm totally unprepared. So I start to go to class, but then I realize I can't find it. No matter how far, how many hallways, I just can't find it. I know I'm late for class, and this really worries me. Finally, I wind up in my math class, but it's almost over. So I've missed most of the test, and I think I'm going to fail or something. Basically, that's the dream. That's a bad one. Do you have that dream a lot? Sometimes. I guess it means that I'm worried or overwhelmed about something that is happening in my life. Yeah, I sometimes have this bad dream. I guess it's really a nightmare. I'm in danger, but I'm not sure from what, and I can't move or scream or anything. I can feel something coming closer and closer to me. You know, it's really strange, because usually in the dream, 
I'm exactly where I am in real life, like in my own bed, in my bedroom, and everything is very realistic. The only part that is dreamlike is that I can't move. Sometimes I can't even open my eyes, or I can only open one eye. Usually I have to alert someone or possibly save someone, although the person often changes. Anyway, I can't do anything because I can't move. It's really terrifying. Yeah, it sounds terrifying. So, what do you think it means? I'm not sure, but you know, I think the dream means that I'm feeling there's something in my life that I can't control, although I feel like I should be able to. Once I had the dream when one of my friends was very sick, and I just felt completely helpless. I hate feeling that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. So, um, let's check answers. What about Kate's dream? What, what does she dream of? What's her dream about? Anybody can participate. Gabriel, thank you. Uh, she mentioned that she was back in high school and she had to take a test, something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, totally. So, yep, uh, she's back in high school and has to take a test she isn't prepared for. By the way, this is, it's a bit strange. I, I sometimes have this dream exactly like she's describing. I sometimes dream that I'm back in high school. Imagine, I'm 38 years old, okay? In two years, I'll be 40. But I'm 38, and sometimes I dream I'm back in high school. And uh, just just like Kate, I'm surrounded by these, like, 15, 14-year-old kids. And I'm there for some reason. And exactly the same. I have an exam, okay? And I'm not prepared for the exam. And it's usually a math mathematics exam. But... Uh, unlike her dream, okay, I am in the classroom and I am getting the paper, right? And when I see it, I only really can write my name. But when I see the rest of the exercises, I have no idea what to do. I really don't know. And it's very frustrating. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? Okay. And I see that everybody is like answering their test and I, I just don't know what to do. It's, it's very frustrating. And I have, I have this dream at least like once or twice every year. It's very strange. Anyway. What's the meaning of the dream, okay, according to Kate herself? What is her interpretation of this dream? Mm -hmm. What does she say? Gabriela. I believe that maybe exists exist uh, some unfinished business <laughs> with um those times or okay. something like that <laughs> okay all right that that's an interpretation however it's not her interpretation uh from the listening i mean thank you thank you for participating but what did she say was the meaning of her own dream why does she have that dream Who took notes on this? Anybody? Gabriel, thank you very much. That she was worried about something. Okay, uh, the meaning is that she is feeling overwhelmed or worried about something. That's her own interpretation of the dream. Thank you, Gabriel. What about the next one? Uh, Sergio's dream. What does he dream of? It's more like a nightmare, actually. Okay, so what is the nightmare about? Mm -hmm. What's the situation in, in his dream? Don't be shy. I know you can do this. 
even if you don't have the correct answer or the answer is not um, complete, we can, you know, work it out together and then we can, you know, reach the right answer. So, come on, don't leave me hanging like this. Who wants to, who wants to try, okay? What is Sergio's dream? What, what did you, what notes did you take? Any information is, is welcome. Fino, thank you very much. I don't, I, I don't sure, but, but, but I will try it. Um, okay. They should dream that um and uh I can I can open eyes in to say um uh, open uh, uh, he he said open to open door open the door mm -hmm. when so so most so men <laughs> okay he said he can't open his eyes basically he can't move or do anything to help himself. But, okay, that, that is part of the answer. That is true, okay? But but in general, what's happening? I mean, that's that's definitely part of the answer. Thank you, Rufino. So, okay. uh, uh, Rufino's contribution is that Sergio can't move, can't open his eyes, or do anything to help himself. That sounds like sleep paralysis, okay? I've also experienced that. It's horrible. So um, what's happening in the dream? In general terms, what is he experiencing? Gabriel? Uh, uh, he feels in danger. Mm -hmm. That's for right. That reason. He is in danger and he can't move or do anything to help himself. That's right. Okay, great. And what is the meaning of that dream? What's Sergius' interpretation of his own dream? <laughs> Difficult public tonight. All right. Uh, meaning is there's something in his life he can't control, but should be able to do. So that's, that's the meaning right there. Okay, um, that's pretty much the listening exercise. So if you go uh, to the platform, you will find this. That's the listening exercise. Whose dream do you think is scarier? Okay, that's the first one. Um, you can write Kate or Sergio, whichever you write. I mean, it will be taken as correct because this is about opinion. And then part two, right? Who feels in danger can move or do anything? That's Sergio. Back in high school, has to take a test and is not prepared for it. That's Kate. Whose dream means feeling overwhelmed or worried about something that is Kate's dream. And number four, there is something in life that cannot be controlled but should be able to. That is her choice. Okay, so um, moving on to the next part. We have the reading section. Okay, reading exercise, which is section 4.9. To sleep or not to sleep. Group work, are there enough hours in the day to do everything you need to do? Discuss with your group, then read the article. We're going to read the article directly. So to sleep or not to sleep. Because of the time, we only have about 15 minutes and we still have to go through the test. I'm going to read it myself. And I want you to just uh, um, follow the reading with me. So in the days before electricity, people didn't worry much about sleep. They usually went to bed a couple of hours after sunset and woke at sunrise. After all, there wasn't much to do in those days after the sun went down. But then came the electric light bulb. And now we have satellite television, the internet, 24 hour convenience stores and long hours at work. How much can we sleep? How much should we sleep? Like it or not, many of us are sleeping less on average. In 1910, most Americans slept nine hours a night. That dropped to 7.5 hours by 1975. In 2002, a study by the National Sleep Foundation found that the average American got about six, sorry, got only 6.9 hours. 
The news is even worse for people who work the night shift. They sleep an average of just five hours. Are we sleeping enough? Not if you believe in the old formula of eight hours of rest, eight hours of work, and eight hours of play. On the other hand, Norman Stanley, a British scientist who studies sleep, believes people's sleep needs vary. Some people need as many as 11 hours, but others need a few as three, as few as three. Uh, how much do you really need? To find out, he says, simply sleep until you wake naturally without the help of an alarm clock. That's your sleep need. Meanwhile, other scientists and pharmaceutical researchers are searching for new ways to keep us lo awake longer. Some are developing chemicals that are safer and more powerful than caffeine, the chemical found in coffee and tea. One experimental drug, CX717, kept laboratory monkeys working happily, healthily, and accurately for 36 hours. Future breakthroughs may allow people to safely stay awake for several days straight. One group of researchers is studying a gene found in some fruit flies that lets them get by on one third the usual amount of sleep. Another group is even working on an electric switch that instantly wakes up a sleeping brain. The implications of this research are huge. On the one hand, this could lead to a world where we work longer and longer hours with less and less sleep. On the other hand, if we need less sleep, we will have more time, more free time to travel, read, volunteer, and spend time with family. To sleep or not to sleep? That may soon be the question. So that's the article right there. It's kind of a long article. Um, Question number one, okay, this is uh, the exercise in the platform. How much does the average American sleep according to the article? I mean, that would be like the most recent uh, piece of information they have, the book is kind of old. So how much does the average American sleep? Can anybody answer this, please? Lisa, thank you. Uh, 6.9 hours. 6.9 hours. That was in 2002. That's 21 years ago. Can you imagine? Now, God knows what the average is right now. Thank you, Lisa. To know exactly how much hours of sleep we need, we need to set an alarm clock or wake up naturally. According to the article, what are we supposed to do? Ana Cecilia. Yeah. Wake up naturally. Wake up naturally. That's right. Very good. Number three, what changed the way we sleep? Electricity or the internet? Elizabeth. Electricity. Electricity. Yeah, that's right. Number four, in which animals are scientists experimenting on? Rats or monkeys? Elizabeth. Monkeys. Monkeys. Yeah, that's right. Number five. If we need if we needed less sleep, we will have more time to travel, sleep, spend time with family, travel, read, spend time with family. Which one would it, would that be? Elizabeth. I know. Yes, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Tra travel, sleep, spend time with family. Travel, sleep, spend time with family. Um, no. I'm sorry. Well, but. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be then? That will be uh, the second option, right? Just travel, read, and spend time with family. Because in this case, it's like if we needed less sleep, okay, we will have more time to not sleep, right? Because we will need less sleep. Okay, so yeah, that's right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, very good. Um, that's a reading exercise. 
And that's the last exercise in the platform, at least in section number four. Now uh, we have about 10 minutes, so we have to go and cover uh, the final exam. Take a good look, everybody. So uh, this is the final exam. Listenings, part one, instructions, listen to a conversation between two tourists, then check true or false. Thomas arrived in Chile yesterday. Kathy is going to travel in China for a month. No one visits Patagonia in January or February. And number four, Thomas goes to Torre del Paine Natural Park every three weeks. Okay, I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen. And after that, you tell me which ones are true, which ones are false. Here we go. Listen to a conversation between two tourists, Kathy and Tomas. Then check true or false. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm from Toronto. Where are you from? Buenos Aires. Nice to meet you, Kathy. I'm Tomas. Nice to meet you, too. How long have you been traveling in Chile? About three weeks now. What about you? I just arrived two days ago. I'm staying for a month. Good. Then you'll get to see a lot of the country. Yeah, I'm planning to travel from Santiago down to Patagonia. Oh, Patagonia is great. And it's the perfect time of year to hike there. It's not too cold? Not at all. Despite what some people think, Patagonia has a pretty mild climate. And it's summertime now. January and February are the months when most people visit. So there are a lot of tourists down there right now? Not really. Patagonia is far from everything. Usually only serious hikers go there. I've heard one of the best parks for hiking is Torre del Paine. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it has some of the most beautiful views in Chile. Nice. When were you there? I was there last week, but I go every year. Next summer, I'm actually going to volunteer in the park. Seriously? Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait. All right. Because of the time, you can just answer the questions without raising your hand. Number one, Tomas arrived in Chile yesterday. True or false? It is false. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. N no need to raise hands right now because, because we don't have much time. If you know the answer, just tell me. <laughs> okay. So number two, Kathy is going to travel in Chile for a month. True or false? Um, number two? It's true. Thank you, Byron. It's true. Number three, no one visits Patagonia in January or February. Is that true or false, according to what uh, Tomas said? It is false. Yeah, that's right. That's when there's most tourists. And number four, Tomas goes to Torre del Paine National Park every three years. True or false? It is false, okay? He goes every year, he said. Okay. Uh, part two, listen to the conversations between two friends, then check the phrases that best completes each sentence. The woman goes to bed early after the 11 o'clock news and immediately, immediate, there's a typo here, immediately after dinner. Number two, the woman drinks tea, coffee, or milk after dinner. Number three, the woman normally exercises during the 11 o'clock news, early in the day or at five o'clock. And the man uh, says you shouldn't exercise for three hours early in the morning or right before you go to bed. I'm playing the track, listen and choose the right answer. Listen to a conversation between two friends, then check the best answers. <sighs> I don't get it, Chris. I'm really tired, but I'm still not sleeping well these days. That's too bad. Maybe you're staying up too late. Well, I usually watch the 11 o'clock news before I turn in, so I guess I am getting to bed pretty late. And what about caffeine? Have you been drinking coffee or tea after 5 o'clock? Hmm, I usually drink tea after dinner. Maybe it's keeping you up at night. I don't know. 
I feel drowsy when I go to bed, but I just can't fall asleep. And I know I'm tired because I exercise for an hour while I'm watching the news. Oh, that's it. You should probably exercise earlier. I read that some people perk up after they exercise vigorously, so it's not usually a good idea to exercise right before bed. You should finish exercising at least three hours before trying to go to sleep so that you have time to calm down first. Hmm, I've never heard that before. I guess it makes sense. So I should exercise earlier in the day and just relax after dinner? Yeah, just chill out in the evenings. Then you'll probably sleep like a log. Okay, so uh, number one, the woman goes to bed. When does she go to bed? Fino? It's after, after the 11 o'clock news. Correct. Number two, the woman drinks. What does she drink? Coffee. 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 Drinks Me. coffee. Or what does she drink exactly? She say coffee? I'm not sure about it. Okay, the answer that will be taken as correct in the platform is T, tea. actually. It is T. Mm -hmm. There you go. Number three, the woman normally exercises? During the 11 o'clock. During the 11 o'clock. During the 11 o'clock news. And number four, the man says you shouldn't exercise. Right before you go to bed. Right before you go to bed. That's right. Good. Combine sentences. Okay. Combine the sentences using defining and non-defining relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. So the first one is Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is cheap to travel in by bus. Answer is Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. Number two, Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Florence is a small city. There are three possible answers right here. The first one is Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate on foot. The second one is Florence is a small, is, which, comma, which is a small city, is easy to navigate on foot. Um, I um, highlighted it on red because, in red, I'm sorry, because it's uh, there's a typo right there. If you choose this answer, but you write the word small without the I, it will be taken as wrong even though it is correct. So um, I want you to, uh, if, if you go for the second option, uh, you'll have to write it with an I. So I recommend going for number one or number three. So Florence, which is easy to navigate on foot, is a small city. Number three, my hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowded in summer. Two possible answers. My hometown, comma, which is a popular tourist destination, comma, gets crowded in summer. Or my hometown, comma, which gets crowded in the summer, comma, is a popular tourist destination. And number four, Istanbul has great shopping. Istanbul is the home of the Grand Bazaar. So Istanbul, comma, which has great shopping, comma, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Or Istanbul, comma, which is the home of the Grand Bazaar, comma, has great shopping. Those are the answers right there. Moving on to the next part, because it's really late. We need to finish this. Um, next part. Read the sentences. Choose the correct order of modifiers. I enjoy vacationing in lovely coastal town. Number two. Most big cities with skyscrapers intimidate me. Number three. I like to retire in a quiet mountain village. Number four, I've always loved little college towns. And number five, when I travel, I try to avoid visiting expensive places. Those are the answers right there. Uh, moving on, exercise C. Complete the sentences. Instructions. Read the sentences, then complete them with the following words. Just add the word in. No need to cap of capital letters or periods. I believe you have completed this exercise. This is one of those that you were mentioning in the, the WhatsApp group. Uh, my city has great shopping. You can buy anything you want. Number two, 
The nightlife is fun. There are lots of clubs and shows. Number three, all year round, there is a uh, comfortable climate. Okay, there's no space right here, but yeah, that's the word. Number four, if you have a dog, you need to live in a city that has lots of uh, green spaces. Number five, it's too expensive for me to live in a place that has a high cost of living. And the last one, it's easier to get around in a city that has an efficient system. Now, the option says transportation system, but if you use transportation system, it will be taken as wrong. So eliminate the first word and you just use system. If you use system, it will be taken as right. Should be transportation system, but the answer is programmed in a different way. So um, next. Part two, again, uh, you just need to uh, choose the right uh, phrasal verb. Uh, meditating before I turn in at night helps me fall asleep more easily. Number two, after all the excitement of the fire alarm, it was hard for me to calm down. Number three, I find that going to the gym during my lunch hour helps me to perk up at work. Number four. As grandma lives, so, she says grandma, but should be grandma, okay, lives so far away, she'll sleep over at our house tonight and go home tomorrow. Number five, be careful when driving late at night. You might drop off and get into an accident. Number six, it's hard to not to, it's hard not to, should be in this case, burn out when you're working late every night. Those are the phrasal verbs that you have to use from the list right here. It's nine now, so moving on. Still need to check the, the rest of exercises. Part D, choosing words, okay? First one is, as soon as my alarm goes off, I get in the shower. Number two, after taking a shower, I make coffee. Number three, while eating breakfast, I watch the news on TV. Number four, right before leaving for work, I take the dog for a walk. Number five, uh, whenever I'm late, I take a taxi instead of the train to work. Number six, from the moment I arrive to work, I sit in front of my computer all day. That's exercise D. Moving on, second part. I can fall asleep is easily it's another typo here most nights unless i start thinking about problems at work number two i sleep soundly all night as long as it is dark in my room number three i feel pretty good today considering that i only got four hours of sleep last night number four I keep a glass of water by my bed in case I get thirsty at night. Number five, I always go to bed at 10 p.m. even if I don't have to get up early the next day. Those are the answers. Moving on to the next section. Uh, yeah, it's the reading part. Reading. Uh, read the travel brochure, then check true or false for each statement. Okay, John, read it very quickly. Welcome to Chiang Mai, Thailand's second largest city. Here are here you can explore ancient temples, colorful markets, and historic architecture. Chiang Mai has the charm of an old mountain town with all the conveniences of a modern cultural center. There is great nightlife and hotels for every budget. Chiang Mai, which is located in the Ping River and near the mountains, is also a wonderful place for an outdoor adventure. You can trek through the mountains where you will see uh, breathtaking scenery and interact with local hill tribe people. Or you can go on a tour of the areas Mai Klang waterfalls not far outside the city. The cool season on this, of December to February is when many people choose to visit Chiang Mai. February is when the famous flower festival is held and the whole city is lined with flower boxes. It's not to be missed. There is something for everyone in Chiang Mai. Plan your trip today. So after reading that, we have the answers. Chiang Mai has cheap and expensive places to stay. That's true. Number two, Chiang Mai is a small town. That's false. Number three, the area around Chiang Mai is ugly and industrial. That is false. Number four, the Mai Klang waterfalls are from the city. That's false. 
and the flower festival is held during the cool season. That is true, according to the article. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have just finished. Thank you very much. Not seeing you soon. Okay. Um, that's it. I uh, would like to thank you for your patience, okay, and your dedication. And uh, this is where I say goodbye for this level. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher, Take for care. your education. Thank you, thank you very teacher. much. Take care. Thank, thank you. Thank for, you for getting uh, <coughs> us. Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Take good Thanks, care. Out. Thank you. Thanks, Amal. Thank you. Take care, teacher. Good luck. Bye. <laughs>